What's up guys? Igor Hernandez here. It's that time of the day where we have to talk trial. So today we want to talk about the idea that there's a difference between what the facts are and what we'd want them to be. And that we should be aware of that, that difference and what that difference is as we're trying our case so we do not lose credibility with the jury. And so that we do a good job at you know, putting up the case in front of the jury. What I mean by that is the following, right? Let's say you have a witness and the witness says, you know, I do not remember whether it was raining or not on the particular day at issue. Let's say for whatever reason it matters whether it was or was not in fact raining on that particular day. Okay? On cross-examination, you have to know that the witness is going to say that he or she does not remember whether it was raining or not. Because if you ask the witness, you know, it was not raining or it was raining on cross-examination, the witness simply would say, well, I don't know. I, I do not remember it being raining. I do not remember it not being raining. I just don't remember, do not remember whether it was raining at all or not on that day. So the cross-examination question has to be clean as to what the witness's testimony will be. However, what your argument is going to be does not have to be tied necessarily to what the facts are. And what I mean by that is, if the witness says he or she does not remember whether it was raining, then on your side, you have to figure out whether it was or whether it was not raining and make that argument accordingly. And you can make the argument even though the fact itself, the direct evidence from that witness is that she or he does not remember as opposed to whether it was or whether it was not in fact raining. And here's why, right? You could get up and tell the jury, obviously if, the, if, the, if your trial um, analysis suggests this or if, you're, if the version of events that you think happened suggests this at trial, you get up and tell the jury it was not raining that night. And then you put together whatever other evidence you have and you put together the fact that this witness who would have been out there that night does not remember it being raining, right? And because the witness does not remember, then it's more, more likely that it actually was not raining because perhaps if it were raining, the witness would remember because he or she got an umbrella or because he or she got wet or whatever the case may be. On the other hand, if your argument or your trial analysis reveals that it was in fact raining, you can make the same argument to the jury. You can make the argument that it was in fact raining and by asking the witness the same questions about what the facts are, that, that the witness does not remember whether it was raining or not. And then the argument to the jury would be basically that it was raining, even though this particular witness does not remember that it was raining. And in fact, the witness is being forward, uh, excuse me, honest and straightforward by telling you he or she does not remember. The witness is not saying that it was not raining. And because the witness is not saying that it was not raining, uh, it, it's, um, it coincides or, or it, it suggests that there's a possibility that it was in fact raining that day. And of course, hopefully you have some additional evidence that it was raining when you make that argument. But basically, the point of this whole thing is do not get caught up in the actual question and with what your argument is going to be and forget about the fact that the facts may not be exactly what your argument is. And so when you're cross-examining the witnesses about the facts, you have to, as the, as the advocate on the case, you have to know what the facts are and you have to know how that's different from what the argument is, if at all, in the case. And if it is different, you cross-examine on the facts and then you build the argument throughout the rest of the evidence and in your closing argument and in your opening statement. But it's very important that you know what the facts are when you're eliciting the facts from the witnesses so as to remain credible in front of the jury and so that you don't sound like you're trying to do too much and the witness basically tells you, no, that's not what happened. I don't know if it was or wasn't. I don't remember, etc. Okay, so that's it for now, guys. If you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and hit the notification bell at the... Uh, over here somewhere, bottom right, I think, and that way you'll get new videos when I put them out. Alright guys, until next time.